without any further uh, discussion, can we please welcome to the stage John Bailey, the founder of Revive Collagen. Hello. Hey, John, welcome. Thank nice you. to see you here. So what made you finally say yes to coming to speak at D2C Live? The persistence. <laughs> <laughs> You're cool. No, but obviously we've been watching from a distance and this event is always, it always attracts a great calibre of brands. And it's just been the fact that time restraint hasn't always allowed us to attend but happy to be well, today. I'm honoured you're here Thank today. You. So do you want to start by telling everyone a bit about your mm -hmm. background yep. and about Revive Collagen yep. and where you've got to with it? Yeah my background is 10 years ago I founded Contigo 360 which is a full service digital talent agency. We were right at the early stages of kind of the ecosystem when influencers weren't wasn't even a word that was coined. I saw a, I saw a gap in the market where talent was look, were looking for professional representation to broker deals, manage their careers. And I was one of the first agencies in the market. And over the last 10 years, we've worked with 250 plus brands. We broker deals the likes of Coca-Cola, Jimmy Choo, Dior, Microsoft, Apple. We also negotiate and package television deals. So last year, we packaged the first television deal for Hillary Clinton and Chelsea Clinton's new production company, Hidden Light. And we also manage the careers of digital talent. So we build brands for them. And Revive is, actually came out of that. We built Revive Collagen, which is co-owned by myself and Samantha Fares, who's a leading television personality. And the first business that you just told everyone about was completely different to Revive Collagen. That's what's so impressive about John. He's also got this whole other thing going on with brokering all those deals. So... In terms of Revive, it got off to a really good start. Tell yeah. us about how it launched. So it was a long time in the making. So it was about two years in, t in terms of product development. So the brand started by Samantha, our co-founder. She had postpartum acne after the birth of her first child. She discovered collagen, but she realized that it wasn't a product in the market that really tasted great, that was convenient, that was single serve, and that was convenient. So she said, why don't we go about creating something? So it was a two-year development process. We launched direct consumer only in August 2020, one SKU, and we did a million pounds in sales in the first six weeks with 10,000 pound marketing spend only. And who was working in the brand at that point? Me. <laughs> <laughs> and only me. No, so we've been very, we're very nimble. So even now we're eight figure business. In two and a half years, we did, we've done eight figures. We're very coy about a number. So we don't publicly disclose more to keep our cars close to our chest to, uh, from our competitors. But we, we, yeah, we did, we're mo yeah, we did multi-million and we only had one part-time employee who was customer service. And even now at, we're stocked in 2000 stores in the UK, Harrods, Holland Barrett, Boots, Look Fantastic, Sephora, QVC. And we're also in multiple territories as well. So we're in Italy, Baltics, South Korea, Sweden, in Poland. And we only have six employees still today. So the belief that you need to have a big team it is, is not necessarily. So how do you handle all the work that needs to be done with those with six employees? How do you resource it? So I say when people ask me why, how do we achieve what we achieve? I say my team work twice as hard, twice as fast. We have a great team around us. So I go back to something that Ben Francis, the founder of Gymshark, always used to repeat constantly in his videos. And one day I thought, he, he always says this, there must be a reason behind it. And it was for the fact that he said, hire the best talent and your business, will, your business will scale to the heights. So s some of our team are here today. Sarah, who was our second hire, number two. Sarah, actually, she doesn't like me to say it, but she was actually a beauty industry veteran, 20 years in the beauty industry. <laughs> <laughs> She, I she, think she used the word fashion job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she, uh, Sarah's fantastic. Sarah spent eight and a half years as a general manager of L'Oreal Professional UK and Ireland. Rachel, who's our PR and Commons manager, worked for some of the some of the biggest beauty brands. And all of our team have a beauty industry background in some way or nutrition background. So we try and find and recruit the best. But yeah, it's, it, there's a lot of work. But we we work efficiently and we focus on the the, the priorities of the key areas that we're focused on growing. Great. So obviously you started off launching this brand with Samantha mm. and then latterly you brought on another mm. very large yeah. influencer yeah. celebrity. Can you tell everyone what happened, how you did, how you yeah. started, what, who it was, what happened and the impact that had yeah. on your brand? So the business was growing really quickly and we first, first, first I should say that whilst this brand is co-owned by Samantha, we've always made a point that we never in the early years, we never used our image or we never used our brand name on product because we didn't want people to believe that this was a fad product. We deliver a market leading product. 83 percent of our customers buy again after the first box, which just shows the results speak for themselves there. And we have customers who swear by the product. We 
actually hosted 20 of our customers last year and we created a video series and there were women there saying that this product has literally changed their life so we're a market leading product first and foremost um that's what is really important but we didn't want to put sam on the marketing literature for people to think this is a reality star this is a fad product it doesn't work business was growing me and samantha sat down and we said what's the next step how do we continue to scale this business in a way that we ultimately become a market leader our goal was to be the uk market leader and we said who's the biggest celebrity who's the biggest female celebrity in the uk and we wrote down names and amanda holden was top of that list we went out and it's no mean feat so i should explain my background in talent management allows me allowed me to understand what her team are looking for in a deal you could approach a celebrity and offer them a blank check and it doesn't mean that they will accept a deal you could go in and offer multi-million pounds in a deal and it, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll take it they first need to take most talent who are at at Amanda's level, we want to try the product, we want to see that it works, delivers results. So we approached Amanda's team and the first thing was, they were like, she needs to take it away for 12 weeks. She needs to see if the product works, she needs to see if it delivers results, then we'll come back to the table. So she took it away, she loved it, she came back to the table, and then it was about a six month negotiation process to, to try to win her, to get her on side and woo her. And there was a lot of work behind the scenes. It wasn't just, here's our product, this is how much we're gonna offer you, and this is what we're gonna do. There was a detailed pitch, how our content would look, how she would be positioned, how we would deliver the messaging. Um, and then after that process, it was touch and go. At one stage we thought, we don't know if she's gonna come on board, but. And especially, I should also note that celebrities like to stay away from startup brands. So brands that don't have an established market presence, they feel that it can damage their brand image if they're associating with a brand that doesn't have a, a strong market presence. So that as well was a big was a kind of a big thing that we had to really convince her and her team that we're in it for the long run. We're, we have global aspirations and we won. We won that pitch. Amanda came on board and she's now, we're now been working with her for three years, but Amanda really transformed the business. We were very early to market, so collagen now, the category is exploding. But just to give you an example, when we launched in Holland Barrett, they didn't even have a collagen category. When we launched, they created a collagen category, a gondola, and we were sat with two other products. Now, if you go into Holland and Barrett, you'll see 30 other collagen products. So we like to say we've defined the category at retail alone, maybe not in everywhere, but definitely at retail, we've defined the category. But Amanda, really helped us deliver that messaging. So while she was a really big investment for us, she allowed us to get the messaging out. People didn't know what collagen was, people didn't know the benefits of the product. And Amanda was a really great education tool for us to speak to a wider audience, not just through social, but through traditional press, print, online, out of home, we did out of home as well with her. She was a really great tool for us and is still a great tool for us. And I would say it was one of the riskiest moves we could have took, uh, it, we were three months in, and we put everything we had made at that stage back into that partnership. And it was a really risky move because if it didn't pay off, it could have been game over in, in some respects. But commercially, it was probably one of the best commercial decisions I've made in my career to work with her. So it made a difference, the a revenue. Massive, yeah, so just to give you an example, from that, we were already in Harrods and Holland and Barrow. We started conversations with Boots and they were like, we're gonna launch you in 200 stores. And any brand who's new to the market, you will be like, wow, 200 stores were like, We've got Amanda Holden. We are not launching in 200 stores. We finished launching in 1,075 stores. A brand that had no market presence had just launched less than a year ago for Boots to give us a list of 1,075 stores on two SKUs was unheard of. Not only that, within the first two weeks of launching in Boots, we became the number one best-selling supplement across the board. Pills, tablets, liquids, we became the number one best-seller in-store and online, and we still continue to be in the top percentage of all supplements sold within Boots. So... The Amanda Holden effect was, as you coined it, was a, was, was a really great investment for us. And that's why, first and foremost, I must say as well that some celebrities have an ego. Amanda is so down to earth. Her work ethic is second to none. The other day we just shot our, third, our second campaign with her. She'd got up at five o'clock in the morning. She just did heart. She came there. She was there all day. She didn't check her watch. She continued. She shot all day, didn't complain. She's great to work with. And that's why we continue to renew our partnership with her. And we will continue to renew our partnership with her because she has incredible work ethic. And she also, if you, sorry, I should, I'm rambling a little bit here, but also as talent, they have a set number of deliverables in the contract. So they have to shop for a shoot, they have to show up for a press day. Amanda goes well beyond what she's expected to do on contract because she believes in the product and she buys into the brand. And that only kind of fosters the her community to believe in our product even more. But yeah, Amanda was a really great investment for us as a business. So talking about investment, John, you've bootstrapped this business the whole way through yep. and had no investment. And that is a big decision to yep. take that money for Amanda. But talked about why you've done that and how you're how what are some of your plans moving forward when it comes to funding? Yep. 
so yeah, we've been bootstrapped from day one, which you mentioned, you touched upon the team. I think when you, when it's your own money, you count every penny. Like we have big, obviously we have a big brand aspiration on a shoestring budget. Like literally we, we crunch the pennies when we look at the pounds. If we're running a campaign, we'll be like, we need to save money. How can we, how can we achieve what we want, but not pay the, the cost that we're being quoted? So we always have big aspirations. And I think if you're bootstrapped, you're much more conscious about your budgets. I used to have the belief when I was younger, the success factor of, your, of having a business. My big dream was to have this big swanky office in London, 10,000 square foot now. It's the least thing I want, do you know what I mean? Uh, most of our team work from home. We have we work. We have an office in Bristol as well, where, where I'm based. But that's not the goal. And I think people are misguided. People think you need to have a team of fifty to be a to be a market leader. You don't. We are a team of six, and we're evident that. And we are really disrupted the market at the moment. So we yeah we've been bootstrapped, and it brings its own challenges because obviously being bootstrapped, you, it, it can stunt your growth. We are in a fortunate position that myself and my co-founder, we have our own funds that we've put into the business but obviously there becomes a point in the growth that you do start to need maybe investment and we've been approached like we've been approached a lot recently and we've shunned all investment from PE and other institutional investment because I say when people ask me why we've achieved what we've achieved in such a short amount of time as I mentioned before we work twice as hard and twice as fast as our competitors I don't need to go to a board for approval and if I take private equity investment I don't want to be called to the board every 28 days and give up two board seats and have to explain to them why I haven't hit my numbers for this month or I haven't hit my numbers for this quarter or I don't need to explain to anyone we know what we need to do and we know how we need to execute it and for me the execution is key I don't need anyone to come in our way and to stunt our growth in that way right now so for me one of the reasons that we haven't taken investment and that investment you could could scale the business at a much quicker rate is because we know what we need to do we're just dis we're disruptive so we don't you know we don't sit on our hands we don't follow market trends we don't create products for the sake of creating products we create category disrupting products every single time so for me yeah and also i should say as well for me that i choose what i do what i do i work very long hours i'm completely invested in the business because i love what i do i wake up every morning with a sense of achievement a sense of fulfillment and I don't think having, I worked, I spent 16 years and I worked for corporate companies. I left school with at uh, 16 and I started working from them and I've worked for corporate businesses and I, I left that I, to pursue my own, to pursue this and to pursue my own endeavors. And for me, I also choose happiness and success is linked hand in hand. And for me, having to report to a board or to having to give up board seats and to report in someone, I've chose to get away from that. And I don't want to get back to that ultimately. So that's why we're bootstrapped and that's why we continue to be bootstrapped. But this year we are, and we have made the decision to crowdfund. So that's really exciting for us. I think people think about crowdfunding is when businesses are in trouble or they they really need the money. We don't really need the money and we're not in trouble. We, we, being profitable from day one, I also must mention, we're only focused on profitable growth. So we've been profitable from day one, we continue to be profitable, a very healthy margin. And yes, we are we are crowd funding this year, actually in the next couple of months. And we're doing that because that allows us to have control. We retain control, we can continue to scale at the rate that we're doing with no interference from outside means. Amazing. Thank you so much, thank John. You. That's the end of our session. We could thank talk you. to you for, uh, for hours, <laughs> but thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. Stand thank you, John. John, are you hanging around for a bit in case people have questions? Okay, so John is going to be hanging around in case I'm sure there's some people in the room who do have some questions for John and would like to find out more about him. So thanks very much. And I just think hats off to John. You've done an incredible job, really, the way you've operated that. And I think happiness is important as well. Okay, so can I please welcome to the stage Penny Black, where is Molly? Come up to the stage. Penny Black, let me just move the slides, along with Paul Valentine and Bird and Blend Tea. And I will just get another chair.